What's up, DC Nation? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be covering the Season 2 premiere of Batwoman. This episode is titled, Whatever Happened to Kate Kane? And, guys, um, first off, before we dive into this, this is the first Airverse content we've gotten in a long time. Ever since, like, the end of, I think, May. No, maybe April. It's been a long time since we got anything from the Airverse because of COVID, and, you know, just 2020 in general, but it's 2020. 21 now and Batwoman is the first show to have its premiere, right? Because next we have Black Lightning, which I'm super excited about. Still mad that they are uh, cut it short. Like, Black Lightning is actually my favorite show in the Airverse, like, currently. It's been really good. Like, season three was amazing, and I'm sad that's ending, but I'm excited for it. Then we got Superman Lois and Flash premiering, like, the same week on Tuesday, February 23rd. I'm excited for Superman Lois. Flash, I'm excited for, but very skeptical. But still, we got Batwoman, guys. It's first episode, and I know you guys are already going to ask, alright? How is the new lead, Javicia Leslie? Ryan Wilder, the new character who takes on the uh, Batwoman mantle. Well, I'll just say, guys, she's actually way better than KK. And I'm just going to say, guys, alright, Ruby Rose, she wasn't bad in Season 1. Uh, my opinions on Season 1 was it started out boring, got better in the halfway points, it got actually really good after Crisis, the whole like two Alice's and stuff, I really like that, then the season, it was abrupt, but I gave it a slide because of COVID, like they didn't get to end the season on the note that they wanted to, but how the season ended with like Hush taking on the mantle of Bruce pretty much, being disguised as Bruce Wayne now, was really exciting, going into this episode they do more of that, but back to Javicia Leslie, right, she's the new Batwoman, and she's great guys, like okay, Kate Kane in season 1, like Kate Kane, alright, She's not a bad character. I actually really like her in the comics. She's a good character, but she wasn't shown that well in season one. And I know some people are like, oh no, she was comics accurate. Kind of, but the thing is, I don't feel like Ruby Rose, like she wasn't a bad actor, but she's, I feel like Javicia Leslie is doing a much better job. She has more charisma. She's more likable. I like, guess Ruby Rose in season one, I was like, all right, she's Batwoman. I got to I gotta get behind this character if I'm gonna continue the show, but I'm not loving the character. Where Javisa Leslie, literally, she's actually fun to watch. Like, how she acts. Like, there's really a scene in this that actually made me laugh. Uh, she gets the Batwoman costume, right? And she tries to pull a Batman Begins where, um... You know, Bruce in the Batman costume, he shows up these different criminals, and he shows up, he's like, boo. And he pretty much frightens them, they get back, and they take them down, right? Batman style, in the darkness. It was a dope scene, and Batman begins. Now, in this episode, though, you see uh, Ryan Wilder, she's in the costume, she's like, let's do this. And she goes down, and she's like, boo. But she doesn't do anything. Instead, the criminals grab her, smack her to the ground, and are about to beat the crap out of her. I was like, that's actually how it would happen. Like, she's not as skilled as Batman. And it shows that. Then she tries to use, like, the Batwoman in costume. And it was cool seeing her throw, like, the battery ring. Like, she's not trained. So I'm happy they didn't make it, like, oh, she shows up. Oh, she's as good as Batman or Batwoman now. She's a great fighter because she isn't. I'm happy that they made her seem vulnerable at times, but still have a fun time with it. It wasn't like, alright, she just gets beat up. No, you had to see Ryan Wilder having fun with this, and I really like that. It made me enjoy the scenes, and every scene she was in, uh, she was actually acting very well. Like, Javicia Leslie is actually a really good actress, and even if she gets, like, bad writing, because there's a couple of moments in this episode that the writing isn't the best, but she still sells it. She knows how to deliver it. So I could get behind this character immediately where Ruby Rose's KK last season, it took me a while. Because first two episodes, I was like, yeah, this guy kind of boring. Like, I can't get behind the main character, and the plot is just okay. And the plot in this episode is still okay, but if the main character is strong, it can keep me watching the show. And that's what Javicia Leslie does. She succeeds at that. She's better than Kate Kane. She's better than Ruby Rose. And, yeah, I really liked her in this episode. And, yeah, she was likable, but she also has, like, a good backstory with her mother, how her mother died. And then, like, pretty much she's striving to keep going. She doesn't feel like she deserves the Batwoman costume because she couldn't save her mother. Because she got beat the crap out by Alice and her gang. Pretty much like the uh, Gang of Wonderlands or something like that. Yeah, so basically she's with her mother, got into Gotham City to start a new life. Things went south. She's on her own now. She hasn't been having a great life. She's poor. But now she's going to try to save Gotham City. I like that. Now, guys, let's talk about how they pretty much 
wrote uh, Ruby Rose off the show. And okay, the beginning of this episode, I was like, alright, the writing's kind of bad. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a great start, alright? I'll just say that. Because, yes, I knew that um, KK would be gone and Chavisa Leslie's Ryan Wilder would jump in as the role, which, as I said, already that she was great in the role but still we start out there's like airplanes just crashing down and one of the airplanes just happens to be Kay Kane's she goes she disappears she's gone and how they treat it throughout the episode yeah every character in the show is affected by Kay Kane's death but only a few of them, I really felt the emotional moments. And those being like Luke Fox, and even, even like Alice. Like, I actually felt that, like her being mad at this. And obviously Kate's father. But everyone else, uh, no. I didn't like the writing. Especially like Sophie and Julia Payneworth, which I'll get to soon. They're writing, like, what they got, which is not that good. But still, back to the beginning. Kate Kane's gone. But what I liked was that Bruce Wayne is back. Now, we already knew going to this episode that Hush is, or Tommy Elliot is Bruce Wayne. He's working with Alice, and he's disguised himself as Bruce Wayne. But, imagine if we had Bruce Wayne come back at the beginning of this episode, and they actually sold it. Because at the beginning, how the actor, whoever was playing like Bruce Wayne, that actor was doing a great job. He was selling it, right? And Tommy Elliot was selling it too. Like, he actually acted like Bruce Wayne. So imagine if we had Bruce Wayne return, but we didn't know it was Tommy Elliot's. May they reveal it later in the episode. Dude, that reveal would have been actually really good. Because I already thought with, okay, Kay Kane disappearing and Bruce Wayne coming back, that idea is really uh, genius. I really like that. But it would have been better if we didn't know that, like, uh, pretty much Tommy Elliot was uh, Bruce Wayne. The reveal was already gone, so the tension wasn't super high. It wasn't like... Is that Bruce Wayne? I'm not sure. No, it was like, yeah, that's not Bruce Wayne. That's Tommy Elliott. I like the idea. I like the concept they're going with. KK gone, Bruce Wayne back. That's cool. But we already know it's Tommy Elliott, so there's no really high tension, right? Now, there's still some tension with, come on, Luke Fox, figure out that this is not Bruce Wayne. Like, guys, okay, there's a couple moments in this episode I'm like, Luke Fox, bro, you are really just letting Bruce Wayne do a lot. I get you guys are friends, but at least be like, you've been gone for a while. And he actually does question it in one moment. He's like, you've been gone for like three years. What you been doing? And Bruce is like, uh, we don't got time to talk about that. And Luke just lets him, yeah, just keep doing your thing. Luke isn't like, no, tell me where you been. That's what I've been like. I've been like, where you been, man? Like, you can't just walk in here. And then he asks for, like, kryptonites. Yeah, kryptonite. And Luke just gives it over, the thing that can kill Batwoman. Like, he should have thought about that better. So he gives kryptonite over. We had a connection to Crisis on Infinite Nerves when Batwoman and Supergirl teamed up, you know, and Supergirl gave, or Kara gave Kate the kryptonite. And that's the one thing that can uh, pretty much destroy Batwoman's costume. And we actually see that. It's actually an interesting thing I want to touch on later in this video. So from here, though, they go searching for Kate. They try to use the Batwoman costume. Luke and Mary, I think. I think it's Mary. The sister of Kate. I, I always forget her name. But still, Mary and Luke, they go searching for Kate. They think they find her, but it's actually Ryan Wilder. And again, Ryan Wilder was like, no, I'm not giving back this costume. I got some stuff to do. I got to take down whoever killed Kate Kane. I need to save the city. That stuff. I really like that. That was good. Now, we get to the final part of this uh, episode. There's a really dope scene where Tommy Elliott's. Uh, he takes the Batmobile, and I'm just gonna say, the Batmobile looks super cheap in this, but it doesn't matter. I still like the idea that Tommy Elliot goes in, finds the Batmobile, just drives off, and goes after Ryan Wilder's, uh, Batwoman. That was really cool, and the thing that I don't like, though, is now they're probably not gonna use the, uh, Batmobile again. It was just a quick thing, but it was still a dope scene. But they, we have this big fight between Batwoman and Hush, per se, you know, Tommy Elliot and Ryan Wilder, and... Pretty much, Tommy shoots her with the kryptonite, alright? Literally just shoots her point blank, and I was like, wait, they just kill her off like that? But she pushes through and takes him down, guys. But the thing I don't like about this scene is Tommy Ellis just beat the crap out of, and then he's sent back to Arkham. So he's out of the picture again. Literally, we just had this big cliffhanger last season, and then he's just gone like that. He's just a one-off, which Hush should not be a one-off. Like, they don't treat Hush well in season one, and he had some dope scenes in this episode as Bruce Wayne, but when he actually starts to uh, uh, do his plan, use the Batmobile, it's getting better, and then he just gets beat up, and that's it. Like, I really want to see Hush actually do some stuff. Like, do some cool stuff. Show up in the costume, and actually 
actually be formidable. Don't be a pawn to Alice. Don't be just get beat up by a new Batwoman. Like, come on, he can fight better than that. He just gets beat up by Ryan. All right, but still, continuing... Then, Ryan just gives the Batwoman costume back to Luke and Mary. They're still searching for a Batwoman. Um, the father of Kate... Actually, this is interesting. The father of Kate, he's looking for Kate, right? And he doesn't want to screw up, like, how he deal with Alice. Because he gave up on Alice. He gave up on looking for her. Then she had a messed up childhood. But here, we see the father, which I think is, um, something General Kane or something like that. But still, General Kane, he meets up with Alice. And Alice is like, hey... You've been trying to kill Batwoman. That's your daughter. You didn't know that, did you? You imagine this. The last words you had with your daughter was when you were trying to kill her. Or like the last moments. You always, okay, when somebody dies, you always remember those last moments. And the last moments that General Kane has is him trying to kill his daughter. And he's like, no, Kate wouldn't lie to me like that. And there's actually a funny line where she's like, hey, Kate's Batwoman. And he laughs. He's like, and I'm the Joker. And then he starts to realize, oh, crap. Kate's actually Batwoman. She's been lying to me. And at the end of the episode where he puts on the bat signal and he it hits home. You're like, crap, he's really taking this to heart. He actually feels like Kate lied to him. And he actually has been going after her this entire time, trying to kill her. He's been doing everything wrong. And I like that. General Kane actually had an interesting part in this episode. Now, Sophie and Julia Payneworth, not so much. They had some bad writing in this episode. It was very random. Like, okay, I get they're like a couple and stuff. That's not my problem. My problem is, one second, they're like, oh, we gotta find Kate Kane. And all of a sudden, Julia's like, do you still have feelings for Kate? I'm like, that's not the, that's not important right now. They just talk about, like, non-important things. And the ending where you see Sophie, she finds a note, right? Or Julia gives her notes. And you see, like, um, Sophie, she reads the note. And it's in a different voice than Ruby Rose. I actually found that funny. I was like, man, they actually got probably somebody random on the set to be like, hey, you want to be in the Batwoman show? You know what? You can read this. Read this random uh, paragraph of Kate Kane saying she loves Sophie, and boom. That's the final thing to just take Kate Kane off the show. I was like, all right, sure. Whatever. We'll just go with that. But I just found that funny, and it was just tacked on. Like, they were getting to the end of the episode. They were making the episode, and the writers were like, huh, do we really want to try hard with ending this whole Kate Kane thing? Let's just make a quick note, as we always do, and get somebody random on the set to say it. But guys, there's one more moment I forgot to mention about Alice that I just loved in this episode. Was when you had, she shows up to Wayne Manor, and you see Bruce, he's sleeping with all these women and stuff. You know, being Bruce Wayne, Tommy Elliott is really good at impersonating Bruce. But, you see him come downstairs, and uh, Tommy is talking with Alice. But one of the girls uh, Tommy was sleeping with asks Bruce. She comes down, and she's like, hey Bruce, uh, let's go again. Alice is like, I'm talking to him. And gets a knife out, throws it, and hits this girl in the neck, just kills her like that. I was like, damn. Damn, uh, Alice is savage. Like, she was very, she went for it. I like that. That was a good moment. It shocked me because I didn't think she was going to go that far. I thought she was making sure to say, oh, shut up, go back upstairs. No, she just killed her on the spot. So, yeah, I like that moment. That was good. It just shows how great Alice is as a character in this season. Uh, other things I want to address, the action sequences weren't that bad. They're actually better. There was some good dialogue in this episode. Most of it wasn't as good. But I do want to say, one thing that took me out of the episode a lot is the music, alright? The background music. I, I don't like the background music in this episode, right? And actually in the show, it's a lot of like that upbeats and kind of action music, but it just doesn't fit. And I wasn't a big fan of it. It took me out of the show, like in different action sequences. Or when Ryan Wilder is about to get ready to be Batwoman and the music cranks up. And, okay, if the music's good and it cranks up, fine. It gets me hyped. This music did not get me hyped. It got me, like, rolling my eyes. I'm like, this music again? The music is just so dumb in the show. It's just not good. Like, the main theme is good, but other than that, the other music just don't fit at all. But yeah, I guess overall, um, this episode, solid opening. I feel like this episode really was good because of the new lead, Javisa Leslie. She did a great job. Better than Ruby Rose. Better than Kate Kane. I'm excited to see her journey on the season. And I did like Hush in this episode until the end. So I'm not going to say anything about him anymore because he's not going to affect the season. He probably won't even show up again. Um, other characters, we'll see. I do feel like the show needs to condense its uh, supporting cast. That sometimes it can feel crowded and too much is going on at the same time. And it's hard to feel focused. Like, the stuff with Ryan Wilder was good, where the scenes with Sophie and Julia Pennyworth weren't so much. So, 
Throughout this episode, I was going back and forth from, oh, that's dope, to that's stupid. Like, that's pretty much my feelings in the episode. I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10. It's decent. It's a decent opener. I'm going to continue to watch this uh, season. Hopefully, it's better than season 1. Season 1 wasn't terrible. I know a lot of people were like, season 1 was just uh, atrocities. It was terrible. No, no. It, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. But I just thought it was decent, right? It had, it had its moments. But I don't want this season to just be like season one, where, alright, it's decent, has its moments, and that's it. Forgettable. This season, I want it to be promising. I want it to be amazing. And this episode shows some potential and it's leader, right? If it's one thing that can bring this show to greatness is Javicia Leslie, right? By this episode, it shows that. And yeah, guys, tell me your thoughts on this episode down below. What'd you like the most about? What'd you rate from 1 to 10? What are your theories for the rest of the season? I don't really have theories, because they kind of left it open. They didn't really tease anything that much. Like, I, I know Alice says there's a war coming to Gotham, but that's as generic as they come. So yeah. But yeah, guys, if you like the video, give a big thumbs up on your channel. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out my next Bad Woman review. And guys, if this video gets a lot of likes, a lot of views, a lot of comments, then next week, we'll do a reaction. I'll do a reaction to the new episode, and I think you guys will enjoy that. I didn't do it for this episode, because I'm just trying to see you guys' thoughts on the season, and if this video gets a lot of interaction, then I'll actually spend the time to make a reaction, because reaction takes a little longer with copyright strikes and stuff, where a review, I can give my thoughts and put out to you guys, and I really want to hear your thoughts on this episode, because this is the big episode, the premiere, the air versus back, Batwoman has a new lead. Like, there's a lot of interesting stuff going into this episode. And, yeah, that's all I gotta say, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And, peace out.